Welcome to another free video tutorial brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's class, we're going to learn basic contact management. Now, contact management involves keeping track of all of the contacts that you have in your customer database. So if you have a conversation with a customer or a customer comes into the store, anything you want to track as being a contact with that person, that's going to be saved in our contact management database. Now this database requires another one of my database templates. You can find it on this page. I'll put a link in the description below so you can just click on it. All it is is a simple customer database with a customer table and a customer form. You can build it from scratch if you want to or you can download the template free from my website. This just keeps me from having to reinvent the wheel with every tutorial. Okay, so here I am inside the basic customer database that I built before. Here's a simple customer table, first name, last name, address, and so on. And I've got a basic customer form. It looks just like that. Now what I want to do is every time Jim Kirk calls me on the phone or has a conversation or stops in the shop, I want to track each one of those contacts. Now you could just put it in the notes field. And that's what a lot of people do that don't know how to properly build access databases. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you're very limited. You can't do reports, you can't sort them, you can't filter information. It's all just in one big note field. So what we want to do is we want to create a second table, a contact table, to store each bit of information about the contacts for this customer. I can have none, I could have one, I could have an unlimited number of contacts for this customer, and they all go in a separate table. So taking a look at the customer table, remember from our last class that we have a customer ID here, and that's a unique number that tracks each customer, right? Jim Kirk is customer ID 2. He'll always be customer number 2. I can use that customer number 2, the key field, remember that, the primary key field? I can use that in my contact table to know which customer I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and build a contact table. I'm just going to slide the customer table up just a bit, just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to do that. So my contact table and my customer table are side by side. So let's go up here. I'm going to go create table design. Slide this down just a bit. Okay. Now every table should start with its own primary key field. In this particular case, it's the contact ID. And that'll be an auto number. Now, that contact ID is the primary key for this table, and it represents a unique contact, an instance of communication with this customer. Now, how do I know which customer this contact represents? Well, that's what this customer ID is for up here. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to make a field called customer ID. Now, this can't be an auto number because an auto number says to access, hey, start with one and generate unique numbers for each record going up. So you don't want two auto numbers in your table. All right? So this just has to be a regular number. All right? Specifically, a number of type long integer. Now we put in here the fields that we want to track for each particular contact. For example, the contact date. Don't put just date in there or time. The words date and time are reserved words in Access. They're special words. Access will let you get away with it, but trust me, don't do it. Make it contact date. That'll be a date or time. I like to put in next a short description, which will be short text, and then I like to put in notes, which will be long text. They used to call long text memo. The reason why I like both is because Short text is easier to do stuff with, to sort, to filter, all that stuff. Um, long text can be very, very, very big fields. You can store lots and lots of information on them, but they're not as flexible as using short text fields. So I like to have one of each. The short text is like a quick description. If you need more notes, like the customer sends you an email and you want to make sure you store the whole thing, you can copy and paste it into a long text field. And that's pretty much it for now. That's basic contact management, the, the date and time and what happened. Later on, in some of my other templates, we'll put more stuff in here, like do I need to follow up with this customer and what date and time should I follow up with this customer. But for now, let's save this, Control-S, save, and this will be my contact T, my contact table. 
No primary key defined. Should I define one? Yes, I'm going to. Notice how I put the key next to the auto number, the contact ID. I'm going to close this and let's reopen it. Contact T. I'm going to open it and slide it right underneath my customer table. I'm going to slide it over just a little bit too. Okay. So let's put some contacts in the contact table. Now, customer ID zero, there is no customer zero. So let's say the first contact is with Sue Jones. So I'm going to put in here a three. See how that works? The contact date. There's a special key you can press on your keyboard. It's control semicolon. That'll insert the current date. All right. Control semicolon. You can put the time in there if you want to as well. If you want to put the date and time in there. All right. The time, if you want to, you can click after that and go space and then it's control shift semicolon or, or basically control colon. All right. That puts the date and time in there. And yes, in a later class, I'll show you how you can automatically have that default to right now. But we'll get to that later. Okay, a description, right? Um, asked about her cat. Let's say we're running a pet shelter. If you want to put notes in there, you can. All right, but I'm not going to. Tab, tab. Okay, next contact, let's say, is with Jim Kirk. He gives us a call. Number two, that's customer two. All right, date and time. And uh, needs more dilithium. Yes, I told you in the last class, I'm a Star Trek nerd. Okay. And here are some notes. Okay. Next, let's say Sue Jones calls back. I'm going to get rid of this time out of here, though. We just care about the date. I was just showing you that. All right. So Sue Jones calls back. So now we're customer three again. See how you can have multiple contacts for each one of these customers. Ignore this number. This number is meaningless. Okay. This is the contact ID. We'll probably never use it. All right. This is what matters. This is just in case we want to do stuff with it later. If we want to make reports or, or link the contact table to something else, okay, then we might possibly utilize this auto number. But for now, all we care about is this. All right, contact date. Let's say Sue called back, picking up her cat tomorrow. I don't know why a cat shelter would need dilithium crystals, but all right. Next contact, let's say Richard Ross calls. I call in, right? Right, checking on status, whatever. All right, so you see how this works? That is the number that matters. This is the customer. Each time the customer calls in, we're going to put the customer ID in this table and then the information in the contacts. Now, you don't want to have to keep typing that number in. That's a pain. So what we can do is we can make a contact form and drop that inside of our customer form as a subform. And Access will automatically make that relationship between them, and you won't have to keep typing in that customer ID. Let's do that. So let's go up here. We're going to go to Create. And then form design. We covered this in the last class. First thing is to double click here in the form properties and tell this form where it's getting its data from. So on the data tab under record source, we're going to pick contact T this time. This is the contact T. All right. Then we're going to add some fields. I'm just going to shrink this up a little bit. We'll come up to add existing fields. There's the fields from our contact table. I'm going to click on the first one, hold down the shift key and click on the last one that selects them all. Click and drag them over here, just like that. Okay, see how easy that is? Let's drag this stuff up in the corner, nice and neat, customer ID like that. Okay, the contact date. Let's get everything all nice and nice here. The description, the description can be a little longer. Okay, and then the notes will go over to the right over here. Like that. And I'm going to drag notes underneath. Actually, we can get rid of that label, right? I'm going to delete that label. Click delete. We know this is our note field. Again, a little bit of a training issue. And if you want this to look all nice and neat, you can highlight all of these three guys. Click and slide them over like that. I cover all this neat little uh, uh, form formatting tricks and stuff like this in my full beginner one class. I spent a lot of time on it, so I'm not going to waste the time here. All right, if you want to watch that, it's free. It's on my YouTube channel, beginner level one. It's three hours long. The, the purpose of these little template videos is to give you this information quick, all right? So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on formatting. All right, let's make the background color here. Let's go, I don't know, green. Well, the customer table, the customer form is, is blue. So let's, let's go with the darker blue. Let's go with the dark blue. And we'll highlight these, and we'll make these black like that. All right, so there's the contact ID, the customer ID. Whoops, customer ID. I put a C in there. Click space, contact date. Now here, you don't have to say contact date. You can just say date in your label. 
Okay, because this is just for you to see. All right, the contact ID and the customer ID. Let's gray those out like that because the 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 user needs to know they can't change those. I mean, they could change the customer ID if they really wanted to, but it will change who the contact is for. And I like to take notes fields like this. I like to make them look like little sticky pads. So I mean, I like to give them like a little tiny bit of yellow. I just think it looks nice. All right, let's save this contact F. That's my contact form, and I'm going to close that down. Now I can open up the contact form if I want to and just come in here and look at stuff, but it's not very helpful. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the contact form inside of our customer form. So open up the customer form. We're going to right click design view, slide this down like this, make some room down here in the bottom. This is where our contacts are going right down here in the bottom. And it's a big empty space. Come over here, find the contact form, drag it, drop it right there. See that? I've put this form inside of the other one that's called a subform. All right, I'm going to delete this little label here. We don't need it. And I'm going to slide this guy up like that. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. That should be big enough, but let's make it a little bit bigger just in case. All right, bring this side back over like so. Okay, and keeping with tradition, let's make this notes field yellow as well. Format. Well, I've got the same color there. Okay, that way the user knows yellow is for notes. A little bit of a training issue. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. I'm going to close this. Save changes, sure. Let's open up the customer form now. All right, look at that. Now, you've got two navigation bars down here on the bottom. This one is for the customers. This one up here is for the contacts. Now notice, right, customer ID one, customer ID one. All right, see how they're linked together? This is only showing me the contacts for this customers because Access saw that we had a customer ID field on both forms. So it made that automatic relationship. There is a way to make relationships manually. I will show you that in a different class. But for now, notice if I go to the next customer, right, there's Jim Kirk. There's his contact. He needs more Dell Lithium. And you're only seeing the one contact for him. If I go to the next record, you can see there's Sue Jones. All right, one of two. She's got two contacts. All right, asked about her cat and picking up her cat tomorrow. Here's the nice thing. If I go to a blank new record, if I want to add a contact, click here. All right. Notice the customer ID is automatically set for us. It's linked these two together. So that three is automatically set in that subform. So now I can come down here. I can put in a new one, right? Picked up cat. He was friendly. All right. See that? And there you go. That's how you set up a basic contact management system. The benefit of this is I can have an unlimited number of contacts for each customer, right? And those two tables are related together. You no longer have to put all this information in the notes. And there's all kinds of stuff that we can do. We can make uh, follow-up lists, to-do lists based on this. We can sort this information. We can generate reports that shows customers with all these contacts. We can count the contacts. All kinds of things we can do.